23 minutes past seven, a very good morning to you. UFO is what we're talking about uh, this morning. The gentleman with me now is uh, Bob Exler. Uh, Bob is a former NASA mission specialist. Uh, Bob, we're going to see some footage very shortly um, with, with sightings, but what are what uh, are allegedly UFOs. But from your point of view, what is the, the single most convincing piece of evidence that you've come across that convinces you that we have been visited? Well. I started out extremely skeptical about this whole thing. I thought this was just rubbish from the tabloids, but I was surprised to find thousands of U.S. government documents from intelligence agencies that tended to indicate that there was a little bit more to this than uh, met the eye. So I went to seek guidance from the various highest levels of the United States intelligence community, and uh, I was quite alarmed at what I was able to learn. Now we are, in this report that, that we're now going to show, we're going to hear a conversation featuring you Tell me the context of that conversation. Well, I had contacted Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, who was the head of the National Security Agency in the United States, uh, Deputy Director at CIA, uh, Director of Naval Intelligence, and, and a variety of intelligence posts, uh, a, a technologist, and uh, clearly someone that, if this was really uh, accurate, that there really were UFOs and uh, non-human intelligence around, uh, this is a man who had to know. Mm -hmm. So I was able to contact him, thanks to uh, a contact through Admiral Lord Hill Norton here in the uh, UK. Uh, and this uh, conversation, he alarmingly uh, not only indicated that uh, these issues were covered under national secrecy laws, but that the United States government did in fact have possession of the hardware associated with this. In other words, this was an actual physical phenomenon. As a to craft, a spaceship. S several of them, and they were in operational condition, which I assume suggested that uh, they had been in contact, that they had been given these craft for some reason or another, because they certainly weren't crashed vehicles. Okay. Well... Is there anyone out there? Sue Whitfield reports. Uh, Eastern, uh, this is Discovery. We still have the alien spacecraft uh, under observance. Since 1947, when the term unidentified flying object was first coined, the American government is believed to have had more than a passing interest in UFOs. There have even been reports they've seized alien aircraft for secret testing, but it's never been confirmed. Now, for the first time, comments made by a former military intelligence chief seem to imply that at least some of the rumors could be true. Do you uh, anticipate that any of the recovered vehicles would ever become available for technological research outside of the, uh, the military circles? Uh, ten years ago, the answer would have been no. Yeah. Uh, whether as time has evolved, they're beginning to become more open on it, is a possibility. A short time later, Bob Exler received this call. Mr. Exler, this is Tom King in Admiral Inman's office. Yes, you would be breaching confidence and, and or violation of the secrecy laws and discussing his involvement in any matter. I heard what you said earlier, but obviously the big problem always is the pictures are never conclusive. The pictures, yes, are not conclusive, but when you get involved in an investigation and you find the extraordinary physical evidence left behind, and you find, you talk to the witnesses, medical doctors, uh, officials of uh, governments and so forth, uh, and the, one of the cases that we had just seen uh, some video from, there was a Canadian official who was actually uh, uh, taken on board the craft. Uh, uh, when you subject these uh, areas of testimony to uh, lie detectors, polygraph exams, using the kind of technology that we have to determine whether someone's actually telling the truth or not, uh, the results become absolutely nothing short of alarming. Okay, if these governments, the Canadian government, the American government, if they are in possession of spacecraft, if they have made contact with aliens, why don't they tell us? What I was able to learn is that the issue of secrecy uh, dates back into the uh, early 1950s. And in 1959, actually, NASA had a study conducted by the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C., addressing the issue of whether this uh, alarming issue of a confrontation with an extraterrestrial culture uh, should be re uh, released to the public, this information. Uh, it was determined that there would be grave consequences for just an overt uh, uh, public pronouncement by government 
government officials. Uh, so a determination. What does that mean? We would all panic. Well, not necessarily, necessarily just panic, but the issues that it presented, uh, not only theology, but issues involving economics, uh, uh, standards of monetary uh, concerns. Uh, if you acknowledge a uh, type of technology that renders fossil fuel-related industries obsolete, yes. for example, you have grave consequences economically all the way around the of world. Of course you do. All our values are rendered so useless the determin and worthless then, the, yes. Yeah, the determination was made that the only way to avoid this chaos would be through a slow indoctrination process over a of decades. Okay, well, Bob Exler, we'll talk uh, more in depth later on in the program. You'll be back here about a quarter to nine this morning, so uh, look forward to that. But for the moment, thank you. Right, it's 8.46. Well, if you're one of those people who stays awake at night, have you ever seen one of these? there's something out there well we're about to show you exclusive pictures of mysterious UFO type objects which have never been seen before on British TV Sue Woodfield's report also shows how seriously the American government take the issue with a recording between a former NASA scientist and a CIA chief Since 1947, when the term unidentified flying object was first coined, the American government is believed to have had more than a passing interest in UFOs. There have even been reports they've seized alien aircraft for secret testing, but it's never been confirmed. Now, for the first time, comments made by a former military intelligence chief seem to imply that at least some of the rumors could be true. Do you uh, anticipate that any of the recovered vehicles would ever become available for technological research outside of the, uh, the military circles? Uh, ten years ago, the answer would have been no. Yeah. Uh, whether as time has evolved, they're beginning to become more open on it, is a possibility. A short time later, Bob Exler received this call. Mr. Eckler, this is Tom King in Admiral Inman's office. Yes, you would be breaching confidence and, and or violation of the secrecy laws and discussing his involvement in any matter. And the phone was slammed down there. Bob Exler joins us. Good to see you, Bob. You really believe, you, have, you, have you had a close encounter, as they say, or have you seen UFOs? Well, I wouldn't really call it a close encounter. I think uh, it has more to do with the contacts I've had with the U.S. intelligence community and being a technologist uh, and being called in to analyze uh, uh, various video films and photographic evidence. Uh, it, it's quite conclusive to me. I have, in fact, uh, seen with my own eyes uh, on quite a number of occasions, uh, well over 20, uh, at, at very close range, a number of these vehicles. It's quite extraordinary technology. Anybody interested mm -hmm. in technology would be, it's like a kid in a candy store, really. And there's no way that you could be mistaken and it could have been an airplane, helicopter, or something of that nature? Mm, well, Admiral Inman convinced me that uh, these vehicles were uh, not manufactured by human technology, so uh, that's pretty conclusive for me. Do you think, though, that the government know this is happening, know that it's going on, but why don't they want the rest of us to know? Why do they not want that? Uh, yes, you are correct. The government, uh, many governments around the world uh, uh, do in fact know. In fact, NATO conducted a study in the 60s involving quite a, quite a number of these incidents. Uh, the decisions uh, to maintain secrecy regarding this uh, center more around uh, not upsetting the economic apple cart, uh, uh, religion, theology issues uh, that come into play, and quite a number of issues that uh, essentially center around science and technology. You're former NASA. What do your colleagues at NASA think of you? Do they think that you're a crackpot or do they agree with you? Oh, no, not at all. They, they know I'm not a crackpot and uh, they're quite fascinated and interested every time I go to the uh, uh, Goddard Space Flight Center facilities to do uh, analysis that we conduct on, on their right. equipment there with permission. Uh, they're always quite interested to see what the results are because we do in fact see some rather extraordinary technology. I think most people now would, would agree that it would be supremely arrogant for us to think that we're the only life form in the entire universe and, and you know, tucked away in this wee corner of our galaxy. But then it's another leap of the imagination to think that there are, there's something out there, there's UFOs out there. And we do tend to think in terms of little green men. We right. can't seem to see past that. Why do you think that they would come here in the first place? 
Well, that's, uh, that's the question, isn't it? We, um, uh, we do have to come to grips with the reality that uh, perhaps human beings aren't the only intelligence uh, in the universe and that uh, they have, in fact, been here to visit in spite of uh, projects uh, like the NASA SETI project, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence in, uh, in deep space. Uh, th there are serious issues associated with this. And we have uh, a mentality where we like to kind of poke fun at the mm. issue through tabloids and so forth. And like this kind of thing, this is what we, we perceive an alien to be like. Well, these are actual uh, photographs taken from a case up in Canada right. uh, that have indeed been authenticated by a Canadian government official who was taken on board the craft and uh, apparently had some form of telepathic communication with the, uh, uh, the occupants, the pilots of the vehicle, as you might say. Uh, they are different than us, but it's interesting to note that they are humanoid and that the, mm -hmm. they have uh, uh, two arms and hands and two eyes and so forth. They're, they're quite much like us, only in, in significant ways they're different. And also, though, if they can get here, they're more intelligent than we are? Are they further advanced than we are, perhaps? I mean, would they always be friendly or would they be malevolent? Well, uh, of course, we're, you know, if there's one that comes, there's obviously going to be more. And just like we have different species of humans on this planet, I'm quite certain there's different species of, uh, of alien life forms. So we could run into malevolence. In fact, President Reagan, on several occasions, uh, uh, alerted concern about the potential hostilities from outer space and, and why it would be important for us to work together on this planet with superpowers and so on uniting. Uh, clearly, the problem that we're confronted with here is is that although technologically these beings may be more intelligent than us, uh, we appear to be more advanced in areas of, uh, of civility. We, we have emotions and, and things like that, and we have concern for our fellow man, whereas that doesn't seem to be the case necessarily in some of these other cultures. Bob, thanks very much indeed. It does seem strange that we can't get on with one another in this world, so you, you wonder whether we will get on with, with aliens, but thank you. Right, thank, thank you. you. Fascinating.